than ever. Do you know that in a good economy, people spend 80 cents of every dollar they make within 10 to 15 miles of where they live. Nobody drives 40 miles to get a haircut. Nobody drives 40 miles to go to a gym. Nobody does that. Nobody drives 40 miles to go to dinner. Nobody drives 40 miles to go to a bank. In a bad economy, they spend 96 cents of every dollar within 15 miles of where they live, but 15 miles of where they work. There's an unusual thing going on in this economy. We, you as, as business owners forget that people actually spend a lot of time away from their home at their job. They are actually at their job, they might be going to a spa near their job. They might be getting their hair cut near their job. Any of you have ever done direct mail, you never direct mail to a business, you always direct mail to a house. Functionally though, people are going out to lunch, they're going out to dinner, straight from work. Are you, uh, am, I, am I resonating at all with you? People are spending most of their money within 15 miles of where they live and work. Targeting is very important. You gotta take a look at what your marketing is doing. And let me tell you something, if you don't build from the core, you got a problem. Creating awareness, number one priority, but I wanna fix your current marketing problem. And I'm gonna tell you, it's very, this is another thing you could write down, but then again, anything I'm telling you, I, I, I'll talk to you after, because I know all of you wanna meet me. <laughs> you wanna spend some time with me. Biggest marketing problem is actually believing that the consumers out there have your objection, objectives. Okay? Consumers only do things for three reasons. One is, I got an emergency, I need a plumber. Who am I going to call? Well, if you're not constantly in front of them, in their head, you're not going to be the first guy they call. Okay. How about a long-term problem? I'm going to need a plumber one of these days. Well, you need to be in front of them. And then there's the perceived consumer, perceived problem, which is, do I really need a, a, a device on my hip that has 800 songs in it. What, what is that called again? When I was a kid, they called it a Walkman. But anyway, what is that? IPod. Yeah, an iPod. So we need to fix that current marketing problem. The first step is to define your brand. Not only define your brand, but logically, there is someone living in this town that is going to need what you have, offer, within the next 10 weeks. Somebody's going to need what you actually offer. What kind of business do you have? Restaurant. A restaurant. Someone's going to want to eat in the next 10 weeks, they're gonna wanna eat. Someone's gonna need what you have. If you're not in their head, if you're not constantly branded in their head, if you're not constantly in front of them, remember Ron Popeil, the way he got in front of me? Because consumers were different back then. You literally went to stores. Do you know a lot of people don't even get to stores and they make transactions before they get to the store, before they get to the business, before they even call you on the phone, they're making decisions. What you wanna do is to reach a quantified audience. You know what, in my business, sometimes people talk about qualified audience. I'm gonna tell you straight up, if you currently are looking for new customers, you need to reach an unusually large amount of people and take advantage of that percentage of people that need what you have. But here's, now I want you to write this down. I'm, gonna, I'm looking at you, you're gonna write it down. This is the definition of targeting. Being there when they decide. Do we know when somebody's going to need a plumber? Do we know when someone's going to decide to go to a spa? Do we know when somebody's car is going to break down? What's your business, sir? Uh, sort of a one-stop green shop. Okay, so if we are in a, an industry, I mean in, a, in an environment, in a recession, we know consumers have sp uh, spent less, but they're still spending. Don't you want your unfair share of the money they're going to spend, but you don't know when they're going to do it. And I'm gonna tell you that if there is a salesperson in the world that tells you they know how to target the customer exactly the right way, they're lying to you. Because if I could do that, I'd come here and I'd put you out of business. I'd come here and I'd put you out of business. If I knew exactly how to get the person to come to my restaurant every single day. What we need to do though is make sure you are giving them multiple ways to connect with your business. Consumers are changing rapidly and mind you, effectively mirror their behavior. There was a guy named Sam Walton. He uh, owned Walmart. He was a patriarch of the family. In the 1970s, those of you who were, were alive in the 70s, you know, there was a huge recession in the 70s. Does everybody know what Walmart does? Of course you do. Well, he thought that too in the 70s. So what he did was, the first thing he did when the recession hit was he pulled back on his marketing. Because he's Walmart. At the end of that recession, he lost 20% market share to other retailers. And when asked by the pundits in my, in my industry, what happened? He said, and I want you to listen to this quote, it's a great one. It's a good metaphor too. He said, it was amazing what happened when I stopped inviting people to my stores. Wow, isn't that the coolest thing to say? Now, some of you don't have stores. 
some of you have locations and stuff. You might not have a store, right? You don't have a plumbing store. But is it, wouldn't it be amazing what happened if you started inviting people, if you started telling people about your business, tar- started telling more people to become aware of what your business does? It's amazing what happens when I stopped telling people, inviting them to my store. I thought it was a great quote. So here's what you want from your marketing. The first thing is, and I love this one, acquire new customers. But this is a weird economy. I actually think you would rather, and in some of your businesses don't have people spending money, but you would actually want people to do more with your bank, right? You want people to, to benefit or more with your uh, credit union. Uh, those of you who have restaurants, you want them to come back. In fact, a lot of you actually should believe if they just come once, I got them, right? Uh, salons, same thing. New services, more services. How about getting regain or past lost customers? This is an economy where some people have actually, business owners have told me, I don't even need new customers. I want, the, I want my past ones to come back. The way you do that is you need to control the message. How are you, how are you believing right now, based on your marketing, those of you who are not using TV, how are you controlling the message? What kind of business do you have? A jewelry store. Jewelry store. How are you controlling? Are you, are you con- controlling the message to your current customer? Are you controlling your message to a new customer? Are you have a message out there on a basis? Yeah. How are you doing that? Just if you share with us for a minute. Uh, through the internet messages, direct mail. Yes. So you are reacting to consumer behavior. You're using a little bit of targeting with direct mail, a little bit of the mystical, magical internet. Uh, the, right? the other thing is you need to control the frequency of your message. You know, the best thing in the world is to make sure everybody knows that Geico is insurance. But the other thing is you better tell them if you call us, we'll save 15%. If you give us 15 minutes. But isn't it funny that Allstate decided to take their message and turn it on their company? Don't you see the attractive black guy in, on the air going, hello, Allstate customers who've come from Geico, they've saved 15%. You know, it's kind of there's a battle there. Do you have an arch nemesis? Do you think you have an arch nemesis? You do. Who, do you know who they are? Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's not every, sometimes people say everybody, but you don't think it's everybody. You think it's a couple of big, is it the big box people? Is it the big, is it some big players or some small players? One of each. Okay, so listen, when I actually take a look at being there when they decide, we don't know when people's birthdays are unless you have them on your email list. We don't know when there's going to be a celebration going on and people want to go out to dinner casually. But we also want to think about this. The one thing that you can control is how much money you're spending to reach a potential customer. I suggested earlier I don't live in Madison. I do not. But if I moved here, I make over $50,000 a year. I have three sons. I have three cars. We have two dogs. I'm going to probably live in a 4,000 square foot house. I'm going to have three acres of land. Let me ask you something. For you, for your business, and I'll get to you, jewelry in a second. Would you, how much, would you spend a dollar, not to acquire me, you're never gonna get a, it's never gonna cost a dollar to acquire, but to reach me, would you wanna reach me, my household, and tell me all about what you do? Would you spend a dollar? You'd love to. You'd lo- you know what, we practiced this all day yesterday. He's doing good, he's doing good. I got you back, I got you, I had to. He said he'd spend a dollar and he'd love to. Would you spend a dollar to tell me about your business and hope that I might come in? Do you think that was, that's an efficient way of spending? A dollar. Would you spend a dollar? Are you thinking about this? This is a quick one. Yeah, <laughs> this is a quick one. This one we practiced, not so good. Yeah. Not so good today. Uh, a restaurant, same thing. Would, in a heartbeat, you'd spend a dollar. But at the moment, do you know how much you spend to reach? I am not trying to ask you how much you spend on marketing. That's insulting. That's your, that's your business. In fact, in a restaurant, I used to be a waiter um, in a restaurant and a bartender. Uh, the funniest thing that I think in our business is people come to see you to talk to you about marketing. The first thing they ask you is, how much money you got? How much money you spent? Right? That's like going to a restaurant and a guy comes over to you and says, good evening. How are you today? Nice to have you here. How much do you typically spend on dinner? <laughs> have, you, have you told your waiters to ask that question? And how much do you typically spend? And how much are you typically eating? You know, they don't ask those questions. What I want, though, to ask, and this is not insulting, is do you know how much you're spending to reach? In fact, who in here does direct mail. I heard a couple people. Direct mail, right. Now, direct mail is tied directly to the U.S. government. You know, how much does a stamp cost nowadays? 44 cents. So functionally, a dollar would be too much because you could actually send me a letter, a stamped letter to my house to say, hello, Mr. Shapiro, welcome to the neighborhood for 44 cents. And tell me what you could. I'm just saying based on maybe you wouldn't. 
You, right, but let's just say you found out you wanted just to reach me because you found out I'm coming to town. What's up? <laughs> so you're like, I'm getting that guy for 44 cents. Right, so for 44 cents you could actually get in my house, but you're right. You would have to go to a direct mail company. There's things called bulk mail. It might cost 18 cents a household. Maybe some of you has paid as much as 30 cents a household. Maybe some of you has been in the Valpacks. Is there a Valpack here or those envelope things? The, do you know how much they charge, not to mail, because it's always based on how many households, but per household? It's down to around, and this is across the country, three cents. So now all of a sudden, to get into my mailbox, not to reach me, but to get into my mailbox, it would cost you three cents. So a dollar sounds like too much, but if, I, if you guaranteed it reached me for a dollar, it might be more efficient. But for three cents, that's what it is. Now those of you who said that television was too expensive, and obviously I'm gonna discuss about acquiring too, but acquiring costs are different. The Super Bowl is the, the highest viewed program every single year. We ran the Super Bowl. We're going to run the Super Bowl on Fox Station this coming year. And if the Green Bay Packers are in it, hello, cha-ching, right? Because we charge for how many people watch. But last year, the Super Bowl was watched by the biggest audience ever. And I saw Budweiser in the Super Bowl. And I saw Pepsi in the Super Bowl. Does everybody not know what Budweiser is? Does everybody not know what Pepsi is or what they do? Why was Budweiser in the Super Bowl? Anybody want to tell me? Because I mentioned it before. We were talking about the jewelry. It's, it's not just branding because they're branded. It's it and share of brand. Who is their arch nemesis? Miller. Pepsi is Coke. For years in the 1970s, there was a Coke and Pepsi challenge. They took the labels off the soda and people screwed up. They didn't know with the label. Oh, I'm a Coke drinker. And with the label off, half the Coke drinkers said which was better, the Pepsi, because it's confusing to to consumers. Consumers react to brands. Do you know that in this economy, I walk into a mall, I see a lot of BOGOs. Buy one, get one. 50% off, am I right? I haven't seen one at the Porsche dealership yet. Is Rolex on sale? Does anybody can tell me the difference between Rolex and Timex? I mean, are you really, does it tell time differently? I know you better be having a better time if you're wearing a Rolex, but we gotta figure out for you, regardless of whether you're Rolex or Timex or Budweiser or Coke, we need to get your cost of reach as low as possible. So let me tell you a little bit about the Super Bowl. Last year Budweiser ran in it. Does anybody know how much Budweiser spent to run in the Super Bowl? It was on, it was on Entertainment Tonight, you don't know? It spent three million dollars. Now they did not spend three million dollars to be in the Super Bowl and they did not spend three million dollars for a commercial. This is your lesson for today. They spent three million dollars to reach the people who were watching the Super Bowl. And for three minutes, now do you have three million dollars? No. But guess what they did? They're very smart. They spent $3 million to reach 100 million households. That's how many people watch the Super Bowl. So what they did is they spent three cents a household. And I'm going to tell you right now, again, whether you buy from us today or suggest that you buy from us today, television costs less than three cents a household. The Super Bowl cost three cents a household. We could actually show you how you could be on television for as little as one cent a household. So if you're actually sitting there and do not give me a dollar, this is the kind of guy who will give me a dollar, so give me 100 households. We're not gonna give you 100 households, but we will tell you that on a household per household basis, television is probably the most efficient medium out there. But it's not enough, because local business advertising, anybody use word of mouth advertising? Raise your hands, word of mouth, word of mouth. Does anybody ever hear of Facebook or social networking? Do you actually know that that's really word of mouth? It isn't the new thing. There is no revolution going on. There's an evolution going on. Do not look at any of these things as revolutions that I'm going to tell you. It's evolution. You must evolve with your marketing. And I'm not saying you must be on Facebook. I'm not a big fan of you being on Facebook. I'll suggest later why. But word of mouth, I hear a lot. How about this? Anybody in this room in the last six months used the newspaper to advertise their business? Please, show of hands. If you've used the newspaper, Really, really, still. Do you know that the newspapers, unfortunately, have been losing readership rapidly? Not because of me. It's because of the evolution. I told you about my three sons earlier. I have 17, 16, 15. They will never buy a newspaper in their lifetime. Their habits have changed. Their children forget it. And I'm not saying because of some magical new medium. It's they just don't go there. 
Newspaper circulation is down. There used to be a, an evening news. I bet you there was an evening news in this, in this town years ago. They went out of business because people aren't reading the newspaper. In fact, the newspaper, unfortunately, is not news to most people. It isn't. They won't give up the ghost either in that industry. You know, It costs the paper. It costs the ink. They can't survive. Okay? The migration of the businesses that used to use the newspaper actively, and, and by the way, very smart if you use the newspaper. I'm not telling you you don't use